Well, hey guys, welcome back to the bench. I'm going to do a audio amplifier power output shootout test. Which one will give us the most power? And the criteria is the same load resistance, the same power supply voltage. Three different amplifiers here. We have the TDA2003, LA4425A, and this discrete amplifier with five transistors that I built in the last video and got it working. Kind of curious of which one will give the most output power. I think it will be fairly close, but one should stand above the other ones. Which will it be? This is not really a review of these chips. It's just a chips and amplifier. It's just a power output test. I'm going to guess the TDA2003 will come in first, followed by this one, and the discrete amplifier will come in third. That's just my guess. I have no idea what's going to happen here. Now you might notice I am on a different camera. I left my other camera at my parents' house. We had a family get together for Easter and forgot to bring it home so I'm using more of a camera I would use for taking uh, still photos with but it has a pretty good video mode on it so I'll have to use this. Now if you watch my videos one thing you might be aware of is the amplifier output swing can only go so high. You're limited by the power supply rail, so it's you know it's going to be the same voltage. However, no out no amplifier can swing all the way to the rails. There are losses, the emitter resistors, there's losses in the transistors, um, drive current limitations. So the output power is somewhat less than your rails. And that's the dotted line. That can vary depending on the load. The rails are the solid line. These are single supply amplifiers, by the way. We'll put 12.6 volts into them and 4 ohm load, and we'll measure the output. And here's some calculations here. Voltage peak over the square root of 2 will give you the voltage RMS or if you have the peak to peak voltage that's over 2 times the square root of 2 to give you the volts RMS. Nice thing about oscilloscopes now they will measure directly the RMS voltage so we can just plug that into the calculator like I always do Divide it by the load resistance. Well, you have to square the volts RMS. Divided by the load resistance will give us our output power. So, well, I have this one hooked up to power, so we'll measure this one first. And I have some room here on this board. I can hook these amplifiers up and test them as well. Okay, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay, I have the 4 ohm load hooked up. I'm going to scope right across the load right there. And, ooh, look at that. What is that? A new power supply. Already love it. Have it set for 12.63 volts. And I measured it because I want exactly 12.6 volts at this point. There are some loss in the wires to be fair in the comparison. And I have the output here. And before clipping we're getting 3.33 volts. Another thing I'll do here, we'll look at the distortion. This is the 1 kilohertz fundamental. Now this has a non-harmonically related peak and that is built into the original signal. That's 1% of this. That allows me to compare what 1% looks like versus the other actual nodes 
produced by the amplifier. We're getting a little third harmonic here at maybe like 0.6 and the other ones are pretty small. We'll look at the other amplifiers how they do as well. I have the LA4425A hooked up and we're getting an output 3.6 volts. It's already beating the little discrete amp here. And the distortion, distortion is clearly better. It's a smaller node right there. Yeah, a really small node there. It's probably like 0.4%. Okay, I have the TDA 2003 hooked up. Now let me tell you, I had some problems getting this to work. I was getting uh, almost full rail on the output, and that wasn't getting any output. And I was going, what the heck is going on here? Do I have a bum chip? So I took it out and looked at it, and it was a TDA 2050. Somehow, a TDA 2050 ended up in my bin where I keep the TDA 2003s. So that was a dumbass moment for you. But anyway, now we got it working. And we're getting 3.52 volts on the output. Let's see what that comes out. Look at that distortion. This is our uh, non-harmonic 1% reference point. And we're getting this thing that's shooting way over, like, I don't know, it's over 2%. Yeah, a little over 2. I'm thinking that's probably because of the layout. It's hard to get these things. The way this chip is with the components, I had to set it up like this. Maybe I'm, I don't have a very good ground layout or something. The chip should be well under 1%. So, yeah. These little uh, perf uh, these little socket boards are probably not the best for distortion testing amplifiers. But, yeah, it's uh, pretty high there. And here are the results. The LA4425 came in with 3.24 watts, followed closely by the TDA2003 at 3.1 watts. The discrete 5 transistor amp came in 2.77. And if you watched my video about building this amp, it didn't have drivers, so it was a struggle to get enough output current for it. So I imagine that's why this was behind whereas the ICs likely have drivers for their output transistors I also measured at 2 ohm loads and this is interesting the uh, TDA2003 came in at 4.9 watts far ahead of the LA4425 at 4.06 and quite a bit ahead of the 5 transistor amp that had 3.25 watts of output. I think the TDA2003 can deliver a lot of current because it could be used in in bridged mode and it'll handle down to 3.2 ohms bridged so it needs to deliver a lot of output current to do that where this chip is not really designed for that and of course, the uh, discrete amp not having drivers is just too much current being called on for its voltage gain stage to deliver that much power. Well, that was an interesting experiment. Thanks for watching. More to come.